name is Jaylene Davis, and I am the current Miss Ohio volunteer. It is very new. Um, I'm actually the inaugural first uh, Miss Ohio. So that was a, a really amazing thing for me. But um, I began my pageant journey a decade ago, first in the Miss America organization. And what got me involved originally and what has kept me here for this entire decade is the volunteer aspect. I was sick as a little girl and I had this wonderful program help me and guide me and um, basically foster my confidence. And um, because of that program, I met a young woman that was volunteering as a title holder. And she said, you know, Jaylene, you have the ability to speak from a personal level about your platform that many women don't get that opportunity to have that uh, personal, you know, I live my platform every single day and also be a representative for inclusivity that a pageant system has not had yet um, to the caliber it should. So I got involved that way. And um, the last year of eligibility, I went and met a wonderful young woman that was in the Tennessee program of Miss America Volunteer. And she initially told me that the program is just incredible. It's filled with amazing people that all have the same mission of serving. And that was uh, exactly what motivated me at 15 years old and still is my motivation today is to serve. And having that mission statement of Miss America Volunteer being to uh, be the volunteers needed to guide the next generation of volunteers, it just fit perfectly. And um, I said that in my interview as Miss Ohio Volunteer, that if given the opportunity, I would make sure that the last part of my title is well represented as a volunteer, but also Ohio is, is greatly represented. And that is just one of the one of the 100 reasons why I sobbed when I was crowned Miss Ohio Volunteer was because I knew in my heart, this is what um, I've been waiting for. This was my opportunity to do what little Jaylene wanted me to do, and that was to make a difference. And you are the first Miss Ohio Volunteer. It's yes, a great, yeah. great crown. Because for, yeah. the team, for the team of Inside Pageants, you think Miss Volunteer America is a new Miss America pageant. Yes, yes, ma'am. It's um, basically the old rules for when it comes to scoring and stylization of what we saw a, an olden day Miss America program look like. Uh, currently, all of the scores are on equal playing field, except for your interview being 40%. And they do take in a factor into consideration of your volunteering and your philanthropic work. And, and that was something that really motivated me to get involved was that aspect of, hey, it's not just a, a pageant. It's not just a showboat of sorts. They actually want to see you doing the hard work every single day and living your platform and, and being that representative that sometimes just gets overlooked in other pageant systems um, for whatever reason. And they really stress that. And I think that that is something that we need to pr be promoting, especially in the world that we live in today. Kindness and inclusivity is what really matters. I graduated with my master's in public administration in 2020. Yay, we are done for now. Uh, maybe going to law school, but we're, we're waiting until things kind of settle down. Um, but I currently work with Kia Motors, um, which just turned into Kia America. And I go to their auto shows all across the country and represent them as a product specialist. So I know every single fact about every vehicle in Kia's lineup and also the brand. Um, we really promote the idea that we're not there to sell you something. We're there to uh, inform you of what the brand really is about and to see if there is a vehicle in the Kia brand that would fit your needs. And I think that, that having that as my occupation has really helped me in the pageant systems because it really seems in the last probably five years, 
a lot of the pageant systems have kind of transformed into wanting and needing a brand representative or a brand ambassador. And that is what I get paid to do and is what I do in my volunteerism. So it's a perfect blend. Do you like to be a, a, an ambassador? Yes, I love talking if you can't tell. <laughs> for, for, with your job, mm -hmm. your core duty, your family, are mm -hmm. you a superwoman? Because you manage all things at the same time. <laughs> Do you yeah, see? Uh, no, I don't. Um, <laughs> that maybe might be the trick, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, even as a little girl, I had to face a lot of adversities that I don't think many people even think about having to face or overcome, uh, let alone happen to many people. I was diagnosed with alopecia at age eight and I lost all of my hair, which really affected uh, how I was perceived by society, about my peers. I was bullied on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and it, just as I was kind of getting over that um, emotional stress, I was put into a physical stress with an accident where I fell 30 feet and landed onto concrete, fracturing 13 bones and was not supposed to make it or uh, walk. And I think some of those things, I, I look back now uh, with time, obviously, and healing, I'm able to look back and I think that those were pivotal to my ability to do what I do now. Um, because, you know, even on the roughest day, I wake up and I'm alive. Um, I wake up and I have purpose. I wake up and I have a family that I can love and that loves me. And at the end of the day, that is all that matters is that you have a purpose and you have um, the drive to obtain that purpose. And also you have one person that supports you. And because of those things that I had to face, I am now, I think in a, a mindset that might've taken a lot longer to get here, um, you know, I think they always say with age comes wisdom. Um, I think I was given my cup of wisdom a little early, but because of that, I'm, I'm able to kind of put all of those uh, minute things that could really affect me uh, to the wayside and, and get the job done and make a difference and show, especially little girls that have all of this pressure put on them by society and show them, hey, I'm not perfect. I've had to face all of these things. I don't have hair. I have scars. Sometimes I wake up and I'm in a lot of pain, but I'm able to accomplish all of this. I'm able to, to get up with a smile on my face most days because I know that I'm alive and I have a purpose. And so do you. We all have uh, a uniqueness that needs to be uh, prospered into to being a wonderful human being. And so I really think that I'm not superwoman. I might be a, a cat on its eighth life, <laughs> but uh, definitely I just think comes, uh, you know, struggle comes strength and also a newfound look on life. Yeah, so my platform is entitled Kids Should Be Covered, Prosthetics Are Not Cosmetics. And it really focuses on the legal aspect of hair pieces for children. Uh, currently right now, the hair piece on my head would have cost me around $3,000 to $3,500 if I had to pay out of pocket. Uh, thankfully, I have an organization that I work closely with called Miss Maggie's Wigs for Kids of Michigan that has sponsored me ever since I was a little girl. Um, but not every child is as lucky to have a kind of organization or nonprofit in their area that can give them a hairpiece, the social services that are needed to thrive and survive. Um, the classes, the therapy, the community of other young kids that are also going through alopecia, cancer, trichotillomania, those kinds of adversities, nor should a parent have to worry about paying for something while also helping their child fight for their life or fight to overcome this, this adversity. So uh, we have been working for the last, oh goodness, probably seven or eight years on passing legislation uh, it started out in Michigan to cover the cost of hair pieces in children under the age of 18. Uh, currently, we have four bills awaiting a hearing in Michigan. 
We have two bills written and waiting an introductory meeting in Ohio, and I'm working with some of my pageant sisters in Illinois and Indiana to get the ball rolling for them as well. There's 13 out of 50 states that have this type of protection and coverage for children, um, but that number should be way higher than that. So I'm hoping by the time that my pageant journey comes to a close, we can say at least half of the states across the country are covered, if not all 50. And I think that being a Miss America volunteer would make that a little bit easier since I would have a national platform and we'd be able to even pass it as a federal legislation because every child should be covered. That this prosthetic I'm wearing on my head is not a cosmetic. It is something that I heavily relied on to make it through the day. Your platform can, um, you can uh, work with your platform and Miss Earth USA because your platform helps to protect the planet too. Exactly, exactly. And it also works with not only the legal aspect, of course, that is imperative, but uh, because I have faced alopecia, I face this as a personal uh, diagnosis of mine. I know what children face when they are overcoming any type of loss, physical, emotion, um, even just failing a test at school. We all will have to face that type of loss and hardship at some point in our life. Um, which has enabled me to develop a lot of workshops for all different ages and needs. Um, and so that goes into my, my platform as well as building generations that can stand uh, on their own two feet and feel confident and comfortable with themselves because they have those tools necessary to build themselves up in order to build those around them up as well. So it's multifaceted, it's definitely necessary, and I'm hoping that we can get the ball rolling in all states coming up. And for the moment, what is your best memory with your platform? Oh my goodness, there are so many. Uh, I've, I've been a part of this uh, pageant programs for a decade, so I have way too many stories, um, but I've been a part of nonprofits uh, like Maggie's Wicks for Kids in Michigan since I was eight, so almost 20 years now. Um, and I think one of my favorite moments just recently happened. Um, I was at the wellness center for Maggie's Wicks for Kids, and there I got to meet two little kids, one a little girl and one little boy, uh, that were uh, facing adversities that caused them to have hair loss. And I went there as Queen Elsa and I was dressed up in my beautiful blue dress and we sang, let it go. And um, right after we had uh, done with our tea party and our story times and our games, immediately the little girl was like, I'm sorry, Queen Elsa, but do you wear a wig? And I said, well, I do. And she goes, oh, me too. Do you want to see it? And she took it off and asked if I wanted to wear it. And I could have never done that at her age. I would have never had that confidence at her age to just basically go up to a stranger and say, hey, you want, my, want to wear my hair? Um, but she did. And to see and to know that I have so many more stories of these young girls that are able just to you know, now a senior in, in high school and are, are wanting to not wear their wig because they feel so confident in who they are. That makes all of the hard days that much easier. Um, all of the thousands of miles I put on my car and hours that I haven't slept make it so much uh, more worthwhile. And um, because of some of the work I, I have uh, done, I was given the Volunteer of the Year Award and was awarded by NASCAR as a finalist in their Humanitarian of the Year. Um, and I think those two awards speak for themselves and just my humbleness and gratitude that I've even been considered, let alone been put in a position in my life that I get to help others. Ooh, I, well, one, I love talking. And so interview is always a blast for me. I don't think there has been a moment where I've stopped talking in an interview before, but I really look forward to doing talent. That was something I have always wanted to be as a little girl. I've always wanted to be a performer. I always said I wanted to be um, a doctor by day so I could help people. And then Britney Spears at night so I can perform and entertain people. Uh, now, as an adult, I realize you don't have to be just a doctor in order to help people, and you can be both at the same time, um, an entertainer and somebody that helps. So um, 
doing what I love to do, which is perform and speak at the same time. It's just a perfect blend. And I'm very excited to be able to sing at, um, at Miss America Volunteer in May. Uh, for the final, do you think you do you think Britney Spears in the final too? <laughs> I wish. I don't know how well that would go over. Um, because I am an actress by nature, I love doing Broadway and very emotional pieces because I get to resonate with them myself and also make the audience resonate with it. So um, I will be doing a, a slow song, a very emotional song um, called A New Life from Jekyll and Hyde, the Broadway musical. And which, um, which are you looking forward to the most in, in May? Oh, goodness. I think the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to in May is just meeting the other sisters in the Miss America Volunteer Program. Some of them I've had the pleasure of knowing already from other programs like the National Sweetheart Pageant. Um, it's just been a whirlwind seeing all of these amazing young women that I got to meet for like a week now going and doing this program because they heard just what amazing things this program entails and is able to help young women accomplish. And so getting to not only see them again will be amazing, but also getting to meet all of the other young women that I haven't got to meet because it is truly an extraordinary opportunity when you put so many strong women in a room that all have similar goals and similar mindsets. I think that is when we are the most powerful is when we're all together like that. Oh, goodness. Um, so what originally brought me to Ohio, I'm, I'm originally a Michigander from Michigan, uh, which is, you know, they have a huge rivalry. So uh, we won't say much more than that. But what brought me to Ohio originally was um, the loss of my father and my dad. Um, when he passed away, I inherited uh, his property. And I thought I would just be there for the year to kind of, you know, tie everything up in a bow and walk away. Um, but I met such incredible people. I'm about to cry just talking about them. I mean, these, these people in the community, um, the women that I met through Miss Ohio program, the, the amazing volunteers I met at Miss Ohio volunteer, it is absolutely mind blowing the support and the love and the kindness and the compassion that they have shown me, especially since I'm an implanted Ohioan. Like it is, I, I have, I, this is the one time I'm gonna be lost for words um, is the fact that like I can call up one person at 3 a.m. and have them help me carry a couch up to my apartment um, on a whim and they will gladly do it for nothing. Uh, that is the thing I would like to show. Um, at, at Miss America Volunteer is that it is not just me going to Miss America Volunteer. It's not just Jaylene as Miss Ohio. It is the entire state. I am representing a state filled with wonderful, kind people that have built me up to be who I am. Uh, it takes a village to do what we do. Uh, and I think that is the one thing, as long as I can walk away knowing I couldn't do anything better, but I also know I walk away making my state, making my, my village proud of the work that I have done. That is all I could ask for. Imagine you win the crown of Miss Volunteer America. <laughs> all all state uh, will be oh. proud for, to you. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah, I think being able no, to no. just reach a whole different demographic that I've, I have not been able to do because I am one person that lives in Ohio. I'm not um, someone that can, you know, just get on a plane and travel to a different state overnight as who I am now. But as Miss America volunteer, those doors would be open for me. Those um, opportunities would be available to me. Um, and I think that is the biggest thing I'm looking forward to. The, the, the biggest thing that I would hit the ground running the next day would be ensuring that I get into school districts all across the country, getting into hospitals and after school programs right. to show children that they can do whatever they set their mind to, no matter what hurdle or obstacle they have faced, 
they have somebody in their corner cheering them on. And um, if that has to be me cheering them on, then I would gladly step into that role. But someone believes in them and someone uh, wants to represent them and, and show them that the path is paved for them to achieve greatness. Goodness. So I'm really biased. Um, I spent every summer growing up on the lake uh, right outside of Akron in Portage Lakes. I would take you there first. My aunt uh, Judy uh, owns a tour boat um, that takes you all across the Portage Lakes called the Portage Lakes Cruise. And she owns the Portage Lakes Princess, which is this huge showboat that goes around the channel. Um, so I'd love to show you around there because it's just filled with, with history and it's just beautiful nature. Um, and also just, of course, has all of those little memories that you hold dearly from your childhood. But um, also I would then take you into Cleveland. It is big and known for its sports. And so it's got not only beautiful museums, but also um, usually something happening every single weekend. Uh, and then I would take you over to Cincinnati, which is on the opposite side of the state. It really has a, a really cool, um, I don't want to say like underground feel to it, but I can't think of anything else to describe it as really awesome coffee shops, very eccentric and eclectic kind of feel to it. Um, and I think that that really would just encompass how I feel about Ohio, that there is a little bit of something for everyone, uh, whether you're a sports fan, a nature fan, or somebody that just wants to sit and people watch with a nice and yummy cup of coffee. We've got it all. And uh, yeah, that would be where I take you. And then we'd get ice cream at Pab's Creamery, which I'm sorry, everywhere else, it is the best ice cream. You can you can message me if you disagree. <laughs> for me, kids, yes. I go to only for the ice cream. I love ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yep, make the drive from New Jersey. I'll take you out for ice cream. It'll be worth it, I swear. <laughs> They, I think if you ask anybody, they would probably say the Buckeye, um, you know, it's the Buckeye State. We have the, the Ohio State, which then in turn is the Buckeye mascot. It's also a, a candy that I cannot eat because I'm allergic to peanut butter, but I've heard it's great. Um, but for me, really, uh, it's, it's the actual, the Ohio bird, which is the cardinal. Um, I, to me, that really encompasses Ohio uh, personally, I think. Uh, not only is it the like the red and white or the scarlet and white uh, coloring that is really well known with our sports teams, but also um, just what the cardinal means, uh, you know, it's beauty and it's simplicity, but also it usually means uh, a connection to someone that we love that might not be here any longer or might be far away from us um, at that time. And that's how I always felt about Ohio growing up was like that, you know, my family there was just a little bit out of reach, you know, being in Michigan and with my dad passing, he's just a little bit out of reach, just like the Cardinal. And so that would be my personal symbol, but probably everybody else would say the peanut butter and chocolate and little Buckeye. <laughs> You know, probably sleep at the moment. Uh, <laughs> no, I really like, so I think one of my, I don't know if it's a guilty pleasure, um, but I really like the times that I get to actually do it um, is whenever I'm somewhere that is just quiet and I can sit there and talk to myself if I have to, to work out a problem or to prep for a pageant. Um, but just enjoy the view around me. I've always been a kayaker. I've always loved getting on the water. So those are something that I just cherish so much. And I think if I could live in a kayak feasibly, I probably would. Um, but also just a nice little drive, very quiet drive on a, you know, Saturday afternoon or going and taking a walk uh, around the park when it's, you know, late at night and seeing the stars and the moon shining. 
um, I think those are my, my guilty and simple pleasures in life because, you know, our world is filled with chaos and a lot of noise. And so whenever it can be quiet for a moment, we have to take it. <laughs> I change, it always changes. I'll like love something for about a year and then something new comes out. But I think my, oh, my all time favorite currently, because I just think it encompasses everything that I love is a Netflix movie called Eurovision, the fire, uh, fire sagas. Yeah. Uh, with Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams. Uh, their comedian, like their comedic timing is impressive. I love the, I love just the, the whole Eurovision as a whole. I think that is an amazing thing. I love watching it. Yes, I love it. I love all of the, the, the talent that comes out of it. The, the uniqueness that comes out of it is incredible. Every year is something absolutely different. Um, and I just love that the fact that one, it's a musical movie. So that hits that box for me. It's, it's funny. It's heartwarming. I cried the first time I watched the ending and I was like, why am I crying? It's a comedy, but it's, it is just a beautiful movie. I think everybody can find a really good moment to laugh at it. The songs are funny and great. Uh, and yeah, and then seeing actual Eurovision, like kind of celebrities that have come out of Eurovision performing in the movie. That is amazing to me that they were able to actually, you know, film in Iceland and, and capture that beauty, but also just capture a glimmer of what Eurovision is for all of us Americans that don't really know what it is. <laughs> My family is very fan of Eurovision because <laughs> it's a song contest is the best song contest in Europe. It is the best song contest in the world, I have to say. Yes. But... <laughs> For the, the next year, 20, mm -hmm. oh no, this year, because we, we are in 2022, in yes. the in United States, we have a, a Eurovision Song Contest for America. Oh my goodness, that's so yeah. cool. Oh the, my gosh. the organization of Eurovision, the yes. European Contest, go to America to launch the America Eurovision Song Contest. Oh. That is awesome. I am so excited. I didn't know that. And so now I have something to look forward to that's not pageant related. That'll be my reprieve from training and practicing all day. I'll get to look into that. <laughs> it's, it normally is for October or November 2022. But with the mm -hmm. COVID, we are not right. sure of the date. Yeah. Did they Are they back on for this year for Eurovision, the European version? No. It's the, the same organization. The okay. Eurovision, the Eurovision is, a, is a European Europe organization, but yeah. they go across the Atlantic, the ocean, to organize the America Eurovision cool. Song Contest. That's it's, really cool. It's, um, it's the same. It's the same system. Right. In in in, in Europe, we have one singer for one mm -hmm. country, but for America is one singer for one state. For one state. That's going to be so cool. Wow. And I have some information. Normally the final is in Washington. Oh, wow. Okay. That's awesome that they already got that all settled. I, I, I can't wait because I love <laughs> your vision. It's so cool. <laughs> yes. And this year, the, the winner of the, the, the ocean is an Italian group, and they sing, they sing in America last month to, wow. launch, to launch the America Eurovision. Oh, that's awesome. That was a smart marketing tactic. Yeah, that's so cool. I love it so much. I think it'll be a hit. I hope it'll be a hit, at least in America, because it deserves to be. No, no, I really need to be better. I can cook macaroni and cheese and uh, chicken and some, you know, homemade recipe dishes, but that's about it. I, I need to be better. <laughs> I don't even know if I have one. I'm pretty much an open book. Um, 
Yeah, I guess I talk to myself quite a bit. I think I've mentioned this briefly, but um, I talk to myself a lot when I'm in the car, um, especially on long drives. I will just ask myself questions and um, answer them as if I'm in an interview like this or in a pageant interview or even just something personal going on in my life. I will just kind of talk it out and, and figure out it, you know, problem solving outside. But it definitely uh, results in a lot of weird staring from people when I'm at a red light and I'm talking to myself and there's no music nor anybody else in the car. Thankfully, I can play it off as if my phone is going through my speakers now with technology. But yeah, a couple of years ago, I probably was just getting weird and, and um, intense looks from people as I drove by. <laughs> you say me, you talk uh, to yourself. During mm -hmm. the pandemic, what do you learn about yourself? Mm. Oh, I, I think the biggest thing that that has shown me is that I tend to overanalyze or uh, second guess or just think of things that will never happen and, and stress about those things that will never come to fruition. Um, and that over anal you know, analyzation has caused me to have a lot of stress or anxieties that I don't need to have. Uh, getting a little bit older, I've learned how to kind of calm those voices down and not think so much of like the what ifs, um, because truthfully, we, we can't plan for everything. We can't uh, see exactly what's going to happen in the future. And as long as we can like I said, as long as we can go to sleep at the end of the day, knowing we, we did our best and we are proud of the work that we've done, I think that's all we can do in some instances. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that is something that I, I learned, but also I'm very much working on while I talk to myself still. <laughs> Ooh, oh my goodness, there are a few. Um, Hmm. So one of my favorites would have to be, um, I believe it, her year was 2011, uh, Kayla Martell. She was Miss Delaware in the Miss America program, I believe in 2011. Um, she was the first and only state title holder uh, that got to go to Miss America who has alopecia. And that was around the same time that I got involved in the Miss America organization. And she was one of the inspirations that really uh, motivated me to work hard at uh, getting prepared to go to Miss Michigan Outstanding Teen at the time, um, was seeing her and seeing that she did it. Um, you know, I don't think many young girls that have to face some type of physical adversity they have a hard time seeing themselves in media, in commercials, in TV, on Instagram, um, and then in Miss America. And so for me, particularly seeing Kayla Martell go across the Miss America stage without a wig on at points and win uh, People's Choice and get into the top 15 really showed me that it, it was possible for someone who looked like me to do well and, and succeed in a pageant environment. Um, and I really think that that is probably still to this day one of my favorite beauty queens because she, she really showed me that inclusivity matters uh, and, and we need to be more proactive at that in pageant systems, especially. Currently, the world of pageantry changed because we have the door open to transgender women. We have a contest, uh, Miss for America Strong opens the door to the mother, the single mother for the single mother. We have uh, some change actually in the, yeah. in the, in the pageantry. Do you think it's a good, it's a good, it's a, it's a good way to the, for the pageantry? I, I think change in itself has to happen in order for pageant systems to stay relevant. Um, I think a lot of the changes that I've seen for the most part have been a, a fairly positive change. Uh, I think the one biggest thing that I would like to see is, is, is like you said, more inclusivity when it comes to candidates or contestants, um, redefining 
kind of the the bylaws of who can be a, a, a contestant and who can't be a contestant. We're seeing a lot of that, um, especially in the Miss uh, Universe program. They're doing, I think, a really good job at redefining some of those bylaws. Um, but also, I think a big change that I would love to see across the board, um, I know that this is done at some of the other pageant programs, but I would love to see it become uh, regular for the Miss USA, the Miss America, the Miss America Volunteer Program, is feedback. Um, feedback from the program itself, feedback from the judges that actually decide who is the winner. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, all of these programs have the same mission, and that is to build women up and to, to make women stronger and more confident and allow them to achieve whatever personal goals they set for themselves. But a lot of times at the end of, the, at, at the end of a pageant day, we're kind of left standing going, wait, what happened? You know, even if we won, you know, like what could we have done better? Or if we didn't win, okay, what went right and what went wrong? Um, as somebody who did it for a decade and, and didn't win a state title in the Miss America program, there were many years where I was like, okay, I gave it my all and I thought I should have done whatever uh, and I didn't. So what could I have done better? And if, you know, we're, saying that these programs are supposed to build a, a strong generation of women, yet we're not telling them how they can become, you know, better contestants or more well-rounded uh, women or, or more well-rounded individuals in the pageant circuit, then how are we supposed to do that? We have a lot of young women that keep coming back year after year, going from pageant system to pageant system, and how are we supposed to in, ensure that they are on the right track for their personal goals if we aren't helping them, if we aren't putting that almost mentorship at the forefront? Um, I think that would be an amazing thing that, and something simple that all programs could do that have seen great success in the pageant systems that are doing it. But we have not need, the, the world of pageantry needs some change because we have yeah. Melissa Butler, Miss World, America 20, uh, 2018, and mm -hmm. for the moment, Miss Earth USA 2021. Yeah. Have a, I write an article about the, the reign of Miss World America, and she said we have she have a bad reign because she have she have a mental problem with the director. Where she has a lot of problem. I, I think it's. It's a time to change the world of pageantry. It's yeah, very important. For sure. for sure. And it does start at the top. I mean, like you said, you know, a lot of young women, we've seen it in all different pageant systems that have been around for a long time. A lot of the title holders that we look to and say they succeeded, they are the best and they're having, you know, the best experience of a lifetime, a once in a lifetime experience yet they're in the depths of it saying it wasn't that, it wasn't the best experience. It, it wasn't a once in a lifetime thing that they thought it would be. And that's really sad and disheartening um, for not only that young woman who has to go through that and then also has to relive that as the time progresses, but also as a program that is making you know, some good strides and helping with scholarships and opportunities, why shouldn't it be the best experience for every young woman that goes through that door? So. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. And I, I can only hope um, with these new pageant systems that are, are um, coming up to the forefront, like Miss America Volunteer, I can only hope that they show the ones that have kind of had the foothold in the pageant circuits that they can do uh, things a different way and get even better results from it. They can have the strong leadership. They can have the, the amazing opportunities, the great scholarships, while also making it an amazing um, and fun and prosperous year for their young woman. Oh goodness, I'm not sure. Um, that one might be the first question to stump me. We'll circle back on that one. Um, Cause I have to think on that one. <laughs> Your goal, your 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 goal is to win the crown of Miss Volunteer America, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't. 
I think because of, of it being my last kind of hurrah for aging, you know, eligibility, especially for Miss America volunteer, because I've done this for so long, I'm kind of giving this uh, year and this opportunity as my last, my last go, my last energies, my last everything, um, you know, working as hard as I possibly can to be the best Jaylene I can be once the time comes. And so I don't even know if my my goal can truly be uh, vocalized, but I guess the best way I can say it is just that at the at at the end of that week in Tennessee, I hope that I have made connections that last a lifetime um, with you know young women and with the program, um, but also I look back on that year 10 years from now and say that I learned a lot about myself. I saw a lot of uh, self growth, but also I have made an impact uh, not only on the pageant program, I'd like to grow this organization as much as possible, but also uh, personal growth in myself. Um, I don't know if I have an actual like winning the crown type of goal. Um, you know, I, I think it's more plausible and feasible things that I want to acquire as goals. I want to be proud of what I, I leave on that stage, uh, work as hard as I can so I can say I don't have regrets. And um, hopefully with all of that hard work in those uh, little goals along the way, then I leave with some type of placing just as a happenstance because of those goals I set for myself. But yeah, hope it just, I think just a more personal growth and growth in the program because I do believe in this uh, Miss America volunteer uh, program wholeheartedly. Are you sure? Are you sure if it's your last pageant? Because you can compete <laughs> in another system, in, yeah. in another category like Mrs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for now it will be. Um, it's like, you know, when you go to college for so many years and you're like, okay, this is it. I'm done. I'm going to give it a break. And then you might go back for a second degree later on. I think that's kind of how I'm viewing pageants right now is I've been doing it since I could start driving. <laughs> and um, it's a long time, you know, it's, it's half of my life. It's, uh, it seems very fitting, the timing of it all. I'm done with school. I'm done with the like the personal things that I wanted to accomplish um, and pageantry at the same time. Um, and so I think it's time to find Jaylene that exists outside of pageantry um, and let her flourish and let her experience life. Um, and then maybe we'll get back to it. We just, you know, I, I think that this would be a perfect way to wrap it all up in a nice bow and and put it back on the shelf for a little while and yeah maybe when if i get married i'll come back as a missus i i know a lot of wonderful programs that i've looked into and have friends competing in that are a possibility in the future but for now i i really am taking it in as this is it for now and we're going to give it her her all for my opinion i think i think it's only a break for you uh, yeah no, thank you. I, I, yeah, probably, <laughs> but yes, thank you. I appreciate it. I don't know if I have fans. Um, <laughs> I for your supporter? For your support? <laughs> uh, yeah, for my supporters. Um, oh, I guess the biggest thing is thank you. Um, like I said, you don't get to where I'm at in my life by doing it alone, by walking the, the road alone. Um, there have been so many people that have impacted my life in a way that I can't begin to explain, nor probably would I ever have the time to explain, but they've all done so in a way that has either left an impression on my heart, have left um, uh, you know, a warm spot in my life for them that have given me a gift or giving me a, a lesson or a chunk of wisdom in their parting. And I would not be able to have this opportunity to be where I'm at, let alone, you know, be here uh, without them. And I hope that at the end of 
this crazy wild ride that I've been on that they know that they are just as much a part of my success as I am. And um, because they've been there with my failures, they've been there to help pick me up and guide me back on my path. And um, I think that, yeah, it comes all down to just thank you.